Hello, Keith Rucker here at VintageMachinery.org. Guys, today we're doing something a little bit different, and I have with me my trusty assistant, actually friend, uh, Niltz Lima. Niltz is uh, in the electronics world, electrician by trade, mm -hmm. and uh, he has helped me out a bunch in the shop on some things. And uh, actually, uh, when I heard he was going to be in the area, I said, I really want you to help me out with something because I've been asked to take a look at these digital phase shifters uh, that are made by, I guess it's DPS. This is a, it's made by the uh, Ming Yong Company out of North Korea. I'm sorry, Korea, oh. not North <laughs> Korea. Not North Korea, out of South Korea. Uh, uh, but anyway, this is uh, something that a lot of people have been asking me about. I've been getting a lot of questions on because you see them up on Amazon and places all the time. They're relatively cheap as a way to generate three-phase power from single-phase power. You guys know that I'm a fan of rotary phase converters. That's what I use in my shop. I do not have three-phase power in my shop, but virtually everything in here is three-phase, and I get my three-phase through a rotary phase converter. Uh, specifically, I use American rotary phase converters, uh, which I really like. They are a sponsor of my channel. Uh, I will say that if you're in the market for a rotary phase converter, uh, you can go to AmericanRotary.com and you can get a 10% discount by being one of my viewers by using the checkout code VINTAGE10 uh, when you check out. So just keep that in mind if you decide you ever need, want to go that route. But today I want to take a look at these uh, and just get an honest opinion. And that's the reason I have Nils here is because he is a lot more, got a lot more background in this than I do and he can give me a more scientific answer. So before we get into it too much, uh, I will say that we ordered this DPS-10 or my PS-10, which is rated for a 10 horsepower motor. Actually, seven and a half is what they recommend to run on it. I've also got this, my PS-5, which is a three horsepower motor is what they recommend running on it. We took this thing apart and, well, I say we. <laughs> Nils took it apart and he went through it and I mean, he really looked at it. And I'm gonna let him just really briefly, without getting too geeky on me here, help me out. Not too much. And uh, kind of tell, in, in layman's terms, how this thing works. I'm not entirely familiar with American Rotary's uh, product line, but uh, I'm pretty sure they don't make this. What we have here is uh, a bunch of caps on a board. <laughs> Cap being? Capacitors. Okay. We got capacitors on a board. Now, and a capacitor does what? It's a, basically a device to store electrons. So you've got a little reservoir. Now, a lot of people like to use the analogy of water to electricity because you do have a sort of a particle, a small particle. So think uh, a pressure vessel, a fixed size pressure vessel. So on the ye olden days, the fire engines, you had a single piston pump and there was a big bulb, mm -hmm. out, and then the hose out from there, well, that big bulb was pressurized, so the piston would pressurize this thing, and that would even out the flow on the other end of the hose there, instead of, you would get a, a, a constant easy, flow. even flow of water. Yep. And these are kind of do something similar to that. At least that's what they're meant to do in this application. <clears throat> this is AC theory, what we're dealing with here. So what we're actually doing is shifting the phase Derived phase, right? We are shifting in time when the voltage is occurring. Okay, so real quickly, just for those that don't understand three phase, you've got three different legs coming in, and if you look at that on a sine wave, alternating curves going up and down, in those sine waves, they are alternated. They're, 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 there's three different phases. So if you think of in a 360 degree circle, what every uh, uh, what is it, 120 degrees, yes. you've, you've got a phase, so they, they, and their time. So, you know, for every circle, every, every cycle of that electricity, there, it, it hits three times. I like to think of it as, you, you know, with single phase, the old days, the guys that were putting up the circus tents, you had one guy with a sledgehammer, boom, and he was boom, you know, in a steady yep. beat, okay? He's hammering on that. With a three phase, basically you got three guys standing around there, and for every time around, ping, 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 they all take a turn hitting. That's kind of a, again, very layman's term of how three phase works, but instead of that one time, you got boom, boom, boom yeah. going through there. So you, get, you can get more power with less amps, or the same power with less amps, I guess, uh, with a 
three phase versus single phase. Yeah. And it's more efficient. The, uh, yes, it's much more efficient as far as power transmission is concerned. So you have a peak voltage occurring at a one time, and 120 degrees later, you have another peak, and 120 degrees later, you have a third peak. Correct. Of voltages, right? Thus giving you your 360 degrees or worth of rotation. <clears throat> and the idea here is you've only got one phase coming into this thing. So you have to generate not just that third leg, but you have to generate a, uh, a phase shift between all three of them. Correct. Right? So you got your in here and your out here. So you got two terminals here and three terminals here. This is what you're actually seeing. The three output terminals and your two input. What you're really concerned with is what you're getting out of here. Now, you have a sort of a start circuit here, and it does actually have circuitry to make a start. And then you run circuit here and your derived phase is the center one. Your, this terminal here is essentially connecting all the way to this one here, just straight through. And this one has some capacitance on it because you want to do a little bit of phase shift on all these things. So that uh, ideally when you put your voltmeter across them, you're going to have the same voltage across all three. Correct. Wires. Let me just say this. The interesting thing about this, one of the interesting things about it to me is, is that, of course, you got the voltage that you measure across the incoming, the, two, the single phase input. When you start checking the voltage between the ones coming out the bottom down here, in one of the possible of the three different scenarios that you can check voltages across, without the motor running, you're actually not getting any voltage at all, nothing. You don't get any voltage on it until the motor actually starts. And then once that motor starts, then it starts generating that third leg, which is why we need the run or the start capacitors to get the motor spinning. Mm -hmm. And then it, then it will actually generate voltage across there. But as you will see in a little bit, those voltages are kind of wonky. Well, I think we've done enough geek talk here about how this thing works. What I really want to do is, is actually go look at it. And what we're going to do is we've got a, we've got the, the PS5, which is again rated for a three horsepower motor. I got a belt sander back here that's three horsepower. So we're going to be uh, hooking, going on to it and checking it out. And just, we're going to look at two things. We're going to look at the voltage between uh, the, the, the different um, L1, L2, L3. So you, the, the three phases coming in. We're going to look at the voltage between those. And we're also going to look at the amps that's being drawn on each one of those uh, lines coming in. And we're going to see how consistent they are. We're going to see uh, if they're in spec according to the tag on the motor. And uh, we're going to just see how it works. And we're going to compare that to my rotary phase converter, uh, which is what I power my shop with. So yeah, it's a, two, we're, we're comparing two very different animals. We have no moving parts in this guy here. So the rotary phase converter is essentially a it's, motor. It's a generator. There's a motor in there. Yeah, it's a generator, right? yeah. You're, you're powering up a motor, and the American Rotary, I'm sure, and most of the other ones, I've had yours apart, there's a lot of caps in there. There is. And that's what they were doing is what I was talking about, the shading of the phases. So we're doing a lot of correction out there in a little box of mysterious mystery with a motor in it and a whole bunch of caps to try and come up with something that a motor can use well. Right. Without causing any trouble. Right. Versus we're kind of guessing when we're, when we're just doing what they call these a static phase converter. We're not really converting any phases here, to be honest. This is, this is capacitive, capacitive shading. So we're trying to just sort of give a little oomph to that third leg instead of really make one happen. So there's, it's, it's very an apple orange comparison here. But we're still trying to accomplish the same goal. Okay, let's go check them out. We're gonna look at the two and compare them and see how they, how they, how they perform. All right. So this is our test bed. Uh, because this phase shifter we have is rated for a three horsepower motor, I had to look around. This is, I think, the only three horsepower motor I have in the shop. Yes, that is a big motor. It's an old motor, but it is a three horsepower motor. And uh, according to the tag, it recommends, or the, the amperage on there for the low voltage is- 8.7. 8.7 amps. That is what that's basically the maximum amperage that, should, that motor is supposed to pull in normal use, correct? That would be the normal running amps at load. Okay. Yes. 8.7 amps. So really, it shouldn't be drawing more than 8.7 amps. Particularly, we don't have a load on this motor. I mean, it's no. just, just the. I mean, we're not sitting here grinding on it. So anyway, that's. We're, we're not uh, fireball coolers over here. So. 
right. So we're gonna check the amperage and we're also gonna check the voltage again between L1, L2, L3. We're gonna do that while it's running. So we're gonna fire this thing up. I've got a notepad here. We're gonna write down all those numbers and we're gonna compare the two and just see how they work, so. Shout out to Gary Shantz for his uh, ideal meters. All right, let's uh, go for it. We're gonna fire up. We'll do the amperage first. Amperage first. L1? L1. 6.3. 6.3 amps. L2. 6.1. L2 is 6.1 amps. Five point three amps. All right. Now we're going to check the voltages. Going between L one and L two. Two forty seven. L two L three. Two forty two. One L three. Two forty four and a half. Two forty four. All right. So without the motor running, L1 to L2, we measure 247 volts. L2 to L3, we measure 242 volts. L1 to L3, 244 volts. So all of them, you know, within what, that's five volts variation from the min to the max there. On the amperage, uh, L1 measured 6.3 amps. L2 measured 6.1 amps and L3 measured 5.3 amps. So you gain a little bit of variability from one leg to the other, but- to remember that electronics tolerance is 20%. Yep. So, and uh, at the end of our wires, the NEC is looking for something like 5% voltage drop altogether. So we're well within any kind of tolerance with this. Absolutely. So here's what we got, guys. Here is our digital phase shifter. We're wired in. I have got the 220 volt single phase voltage coming into this. So one phase coming in, 240 volts across the two phases. We are not going through the phase converter. This is the power coming straight off the, the grid right now. We got our three phases coming off the bottom down here, feeding into the switch and into the motor. So just like before, and I want you to show that dead phase that we have right now. So we measure L1 to L2, 246 volts, 247 volts, okay? We do L1 to L3, and yeah, 9. basically we got two volts, which is probably the bleed down on the resistor inside this, basically zero voltage coming across it. And then L2 to L3, again, 247 volts. So that's what we are right now. When we turn the motor on though, it will start generating that leg or whatever you want to call it. So start doing its thing. Let's uh, flip her on here and try her out. All right, so L1 to L2. L1 to L3. L1 to L3. 278. L2 to L3, 246. Yep. There you go. L1. L1. L1 is 10.9 amps. L2 is 3.4 amps. L3, 9.3 amps. All right. Let's talk about the results here. So on the rotary phase converter, on the voltages, you know, again, 247, 242, 244. So there was a five volt difference between the minimum and maximum phase there. On the uh, phase shifter, our voltages were 262, 246, and 278. 32 volts difference between the minimum and maximum phases on there, okay? Is that a big deal? Okay. But to me, the bigger deal down here is the amperages. Again, on the rotary phase converter, we were drawing 6.3 amps, 6.1 and 5.3 on L1, L2, L3. With the phase shifter, we were measuring 10.9 amps, 3.4 amps, and 9.3 amps. 
Is that a big deal? Yeah, that's that, a pretty big deal. That is a big deal. It's a big deal. Probably a lot bigger deal than the voltage difference. I mean, but again, the motor, 8.7 amps at full load, okay? We're, we are not at full load. We put a load on this. I don't even want to do it because I'm scared we mess my motor up. But we're already over the name plate amperage on two of those legs. And one of those legs is way low. Mm -hmm. What kind of problems can that cause? Um, basically, you're burning up the motor. Yeah. Just running it at, well, this is slightly more than idle. But it yeah. might as well be idle. Yeah, I mean, you've, you've got some right. resistance in here with the belt and the pulleys so, and all that. But it's, it's sure. minimal. We don't have a load on it. For all practical purposes, this is unloaded and we're running beyond, uh, beyond coil current. Um, yes. The imbalance, the other thing to note is if anybody's going to be watching very, very carefully is how labored the startup was. With the rotary phase converter, it starts up pretty, pretty quick. Pretty quickly. With uh, one of these little guys, the capacitive uh, assist start things here, it doesn't really have the same sort of starting torque. It's not going to start under the same load. If you're starting something under a load, this is probably not something you want to do ever. Because remember, starting <laughs> loads are much higher. Current is already much higher. So now you're passing all that current through this device. Mm -hmm. And this device is probably not rated for it. So, you know, once we get to that uh, magical 10 times inrush current for starting a motor, we're probably going to start in running into some problems with this guy here. And, uh, and then afterwards, if we aren't, we're probably gonna start running into some overheating problems on this motor. Now, the motor is gonna be able to dissipate a certain amount of heat. This particular motor is totally enclosed fan cooled. So you do have a fan in here blowing air over it to keep it cool. What you're not keeping track of here though, is if one coil is heating up versus another coil is yeah. heating up. So the, the heat, you put your hand on there, the heat, that's the average. average. You're not so concerned about the average. You want them all to balance. That's why you have three phases and a balanced motor. So if you've got one that's, that's uh, very much out of balance, you're, you're causing problems. Now there's premature wear is a problem, but premature failure is a, a problem that you can definitely avoid by not running the coil out of balance. You know, using the analogy that I was using a while ago, where you got the three guys from the circus out there banging on the stake. Well, with this, we got three guys from the circus, but one of them is the strong man, one of them is the midget, and one of them is a normal person sitting yep. there hammering on that stake. Whereas ideally, you want to have three people the same size. Every one of them is doing the same amount of work that's multiplying. And they got three different hammers. Yeah, and they got three different hammers too. I am, I am not a fan of these things, guys. And, and I didn't know what the results were going to be. I've heard from my viewers, I've heard from other people that say they've had problems with these things, and now I understand why. I, you know, does it make the motor go round and round? Does it make the motor spin? Yes. It does. Is it good for your motor? No. Is it potentially going to damage your motor? Mm, there's a good possibility of that. And if you got any type of electronics or anything going on, particularly like a CNC machine where you really need things to be balanced, yeah, you might even damage some electronics that yeah. are attached to things as well. Especially if you have an internal uh, transformer power supply that actually runs on all three of the phases, then you're probably gonna have some problems with it. Like if you're trying to run a VFD off of this, it's probably gonna say volt imbalance or uh, DC bus under volt or some form of error like that because this is not giving you a balanced voltage across there. And those diodes are only rated for so much. And if you're not properly splitting the phases, what we notice is we have higher voltages here, right? That's mm -hmm. what our readings were. It was yep. higher voltages than what's coming in off the wall. Well, that's not because this is making the voltage any higher. It's making the effective voltage higher because you've got, instead of the, the uh, waveforms overlapping a little bit, they're overlapping a lot. So they're adding together uh, more than they should be. That makes sense. So it, they've got to, you've got to generate separation between the voltage waveforms in order to get that down. So yeah, this, in AC theory, a capacitor is the device for creating phase shift, right? You get the same sort of effect out of a coil that's shifting phase the other way, 
leading versus lagging, right? So this is a leading current versus a coil is a lagging current. And if you replace the word current with the word voltage, you have the opposite effect. So everything is going to be according to Ohm's law, and yes, Ohm's law applies in AC and DC voltage. So you got to know what you're doing when you're trying to hook one of these things up and make it work properly. And if what you have is a service factor on your motor of 1.0, you probably shouldn't put one of these things on there at all, because that service factor is a multiplier, right? So if you're running at a full load amp and your service factor is 1.0, you're okay as long as you're not exceeding that at all. Guys, bottom line, my advice is to stay away from these things. Uh, if you need to make three-phase power, again, rotary phase converter is what I prefer. You can accomplish it with a variable frequency drive. I think there are advantages and disadvantages. That's not something I'm going to go into right now. I think sometimes a VFD is probably a good solution. Sometimes it's probably not a good solution for three-phase generation. Uh, but you, you're not going to go wrong with a phase converter, particularly if you've got multiple machines that you're wanting to run in your shop. Uh, you're not going to go wrong with a phase converter. That's the argument of multiple machines. Yes. Some, something like that. Well, American Rotary has the phase converter on wheels now. Yes. So you can just plug it in. Yes. Wheel across and plug it in. I have mine set up where I actually have a, a, a circuit or a load center, a, a breaker box, where I have different circuits going around. My phase converter powers the, uh, the panel, and then I have my different circuits in my shop. Works great. There's lots of different options, and we're not going to go into all that today. What we are going to say is stay away from these things if you can. Guys, that's going to be a wrap. As always, thanks for watching. Please subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Those thumbs up and comments, greatly appreciated. Hit the bell icon up there to get notifications when new videos are posted. Uh, big, huge thank you all the supporters of the site who support through Patreon and PayPal. Could not do what we do without all your help. And with that, guys, we're going to sign off, and we'll catch you on the next video. Again, thanks for watching.